Good morning. Welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Tuesday, April 7th, 2020. I am your host, Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Chaikin Analytics. You can find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaikin Analytics. Head over to chaikinanalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for a free email where we get a lot of the content for this show as well as give you daily stock ideas to consider. Hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities were higher in Monday's trading finishing just off the best levels of the day. I mean, 7% moves or so close to it for the major markets. Treasuries were weaker across the curve. The dollar was better against the yen and euro. Gold finished up nearly 3%. WTI crude was down 8% uh, after uh, a 32% rally last week. S&P futures, as we get to the desk this morning, are up 2.5% following through a bit. Uh, after that sharp move higher yesterday. Asian markets were mostly higher overnight with India, China, and Japan leading. European markets are seeing big gains as well. Treasuries are weaker across the curve. The dollar is soft on the major crosses. Gold is up a half a percent and crude oil is down about 4% to get us going on a Tuesday morning. And you got to break through first resistance. That means to me, move forward with caution. All right, we'll lay out uh, other retracement levels a little bit later on in the show, but right, it's an odds game. I think as long as you're above 2650, your odds of a retest are diminished. We actually get the opportunity to move support up from 2300, 2350 up to 2450 here. That level was defended twice last week by the Bulls. Resistance moves up to the 2800 to 28, not 2900 zone. Uh, that's largely a function of retracement levels. RSI still in bearish ranges, right? Not out of the woods yet. Uh, so I'm saying move forward with caution. Not out of the woods yet. Uh, Chicken money flow is bullish, but fading. So indicators are improving. Not there yet. Market breaks out through a key resistance level, move forward with caution. Uh, you know, still a lot of damage was done, still a lot of healing to do. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see some near-term choppiness, but if you're playing the probability game, uh, if at Friday's close, you were assigning a certain probability to a retest of the lows, yesterday's close above 2650 should decrease that probability. At least it does in my mind. Um, right now, 24.50 looking like a nice level of support to shoot against. Um, and that's where I stand on that. Turning to our market in a minute now, S&P closed above the 38.2% retracement level, and that's key. That opens the door to near-term upside. Tech, healthcare, and staples are relative leadership while financials and energy continue to lag. However, what I will say is those trends look extended to the downside. Futures point to a higher open today. Looking at the power bar now. A little bit of improvement yesterday. That's nice to see. Uh, Dow up 7.5%, one bull, seven bears. S&P up 6.7%, 14 bulls, 135 bears. NASDAQ up 7.1%, 12 to 23 bulls to bears. Small caps, big outperformance yesterday. Outperformed the S&P by almost a percent. 95 bulls, 466 bears. Bonds down tech. Tech was your big leader. At the sector level, it was weird, uh, or not weird, I guess, but kind of a continuation of trends that have been in place for uh, about a year and a half. Uh, tech and utilities, big leadership yesterday. Uh, all groups were higher. Your staples underperformed. But I think if you're going forward with caution, you want to pay attention to the staples. Stock of the day, speaking of, is the stock that I'm highlighting in my notes, Jake and Analytics clients, um, Kroger. We've seen it here before, but I like the setup. Bullish stock, right? And the reason, the reason we're bullish is because of very bullish technicals, very bullish experts. Fins are middle of the road and earnings are weak. Stock is above a rising long-term trend line. Rounding out of an oversold position with neutral money flow. Strong trend, weak industry group. Most industry groups are weak. Uh, I think as long as we're above $28 here, uh, you can feel comfortable in Kroger. Uh, I think any long exposure that you have should have some sort of hedge on it. However, you manage your risk in terms of a hedging, right? That could be, you know, if you have some positions and some cash, 
uh, if you have bullish positions and your long puts in the indexes to which your positions are most correlated, uh, right? A lot of people like to just kind of go out there and you know buy stocks and then buy put options on on a on an equity ETF. Uh, do the extra work. Figure out what your portfolio is and figure out which ETF is most correlated to your portfolio and use that as your hedge. You'll be a step ahead of the game uh, if you do that. It's, an, it's, a, it's a more sophisticated way of thinking about the markets. Uh, sector tracker now, moving to the major sectors over the last five days. Uh, energy, staples, and healthcare at the top of the list. Big rebound in energy of late. Uh, I do think it's counter trend in nature. Staples are a defensive group. I one of my favorite trends out there right now, actually, on a relative basis. The three best relative trends by our work, which I highlight in my note today to Chicken Analytics clients, uh, are Staples Healthcare and Tech. Uh, still like comms, just less of a, a, of a bullish trend as far as I'm concerned. Uh, industrials, materials and discretionary, middle of the road, fins, reeds, utes, bottom of the list. So as we rally here, you're seeing the defensive names fall off. Uh, and that's what you want to see if you're bullish. Now, our industry in focus today is home builder services, which over the past six months has underperformed the S&P 500 by 23.63%. Its power bar ratio, which measures future potential, is very weak. Zero bulls, 12 bears. But in fairness to the builders, we've seen that a lot. Uh, I do think the builders are not an area where you like to be. And me personally, I'd be looking for opportunities to open bearish builders. Uh, rank number 18 of 21 subsectors and moved down three slots over the past week. Allegiant, A-L-L-E, Leggett and Platt, L-E-G, and Temper, Sealy, T-P-X, uh, all with very bearish shake and power gauge ratings here within the home builders group. And if we take a look, we can see why. XHB, first and foremost, has a bearish ETF power gauge rating, zero bulls, 12 bears, and a weak trend below this declining long-term trend line. Now we did have a rally. We didn't take out the interim high. Remember the SPY is above this interim high right now, right? Qs are above this interim high right now. Look at things like small caps, they're not. Look at things like XHB, it's not. It's overbought with bearish money flow and it's, a, and it's underperforming. So what do we have? We have a bearish fund underperforming bearish money flow is overbought below a declining long-term trend line. Folks, if this was a stock, I'd be telling you that this is the setup that we look for on the bearish side of the portfolio. Um, it's not a stock, it's an ETF, but you can still look for opportunities on the bearish side of the portfolio. I think um, you know there's going to be a lot of bifurcation in the market here right now. And you want to identify the opportunities where they exist on both sides of the book. Yesterday's S&P 500 movers and shakers are gainers and losers. Uh, Phillips Van Heusen, PVH. Uh, it's a bearish stock. It was up 28% yesterday as they made an announcement. They are selling the Speedo brand. I didn't know they owned it, uh, but they do. They own the Speedo brand and they're selling it. That should give them some cash uh, in what is likely to be a trying environment. Capri, CPRI, neutral stock up 25% yesterday. They provided a COVID update. Uh, now, a lot of the stocks, a lot of leaders, right, are the names that were most beat up, right? Some of the coronavirus COVID uh, data over the weekend uh, showed some signs of improvement. Uh, so the beaten down areas of the market uh, really rallied yesterday. Uh, what's not on this list, but what also rallied yesterday hard uh, were the cruise lines, right? You see, so the leisure and lodging stocks that got beat up, the retailers that got beat up, uh, are seeing a bit of a snapback rebound here. Um, we don't know if it's sustainable, right? It really depends on the economic impact, right? If the COVID numbers continue to get better, uh, after that, it comes down to what is the economic impact and how long does that take to play out? Uh, so for me, I think that uh, a lot of moving parts, right? Everything's adjusting on a daily basis. Loser side of the board, Campbell Soup, no real news there. EOG, uh, nothing company specific there. You know, the losers were rel big relative losers, but not big in absolute terms. Uh, WMB, no real news. XEC caught a downgrade today. Uh, that sent that stock lower by about 1%. And then yesterday, uh, it was down 1% rather. Uh, the downgrade was this morning. Uh, Delta uh, gave a revenue update yesterday. 
and uh, it was fairly draconian, uh, you know, down about 90%. Uh, and the stock was only down 70 basis points. So that's kind of interesting to me. Uh, I pay attention when things, uh, when you see a news item and you think that things should go down a lot, but they don't. For instance, when you see that, you know, 6 million people plus filed for unemployment for the first time and the market doesn't go down, uh, something to pay attention to. Look at the charts now. Here it is. Here's the weekly chart of the S&P 500. And here's this confluence of support, of resistance rather, that's now been broken. Retracement level and the 200-week moving average um, close above it. Next stop, call it roughly 2,800. It's 2,790 or so. Is a 50% retracement. And then 2,930 is the 61.8% retracement of the entire move down, where you are likely to see a declining as well 50-week moving average. Uh, so that's uh, kind of interesting to me. Is the, What's interesting to me is we could rally all the way up to 2,900 and still kind of, in theory, be in a downtrend. Um, it would still just be a bear market uh, rally as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, you know, it's hard to get excited, overly excited, just given the environment, still a lot of moving parts, still a lot of unknowns. But I think you have to honor price first and foremost and move forward. So I'm taking a look at things like, the key retracement levels that get broken to the upside uh, and seeing if there are potentially opportunities within the marketplace, right? When those, when those opportunities present themselves. So uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic. It's something I'm paying close attention to. Uh, I think you should be paying close attention to it as well. Technology continues to lead. Um, and I think it is, this is why it's hard to get super excited because you're seeing a lot of this now. You're seeing a lot of stocks or s industries or sectors that have now rallied back into the 200-day moving average, 50-day moving average rolling down, RSI still in bearish ranges for the most part, right? So it's, I think you, if you're going to go forward, you have to go forward with caution. I think you have to go forward in a hedged manner. Um, so it's kind of interesting to me that tech is acting well because, well, it was acting well the whole time, right? If you just focus, if you have to stay invested, right? I realize that there are some people who have to stay invested, right? Not everybody has the luxury of just going to cash. Um, so I think that if you have to stay invested, the key focus on relative strength uh, would have helped you through this downturn because you would have stayed invested in things like technology. You would have stayed invested in things uh, like healthcare and comms and probably rotated into staples. So uh, the relative strength work uh, is really important and it's why we focus on it. Uh, but I think in absolute terms, you're seeing a lot of this. So I think it makes sense to still proceed with caution. Financials lag, right? If you were following the relative strength work, you resisted the temptation to go bottom fishing and things like the financials, hopefully. Um, but you know, for me, it's kind of extended to the downside. We're actually seeing a small bullish divergence here between price and momentum on the RSI of the ratio of financials to SPY. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to me. Here's the absolute complete breakdown. Uh, we've seen this, we've been talking about it. We've been bearish on financials for a while here at Cheek and Analytics, and I don't see any reason to really change tunes on that just yet. Um, just kind of uh, an interesting dynamic playing out in the marketplace. Uh, if you look at things in terms of relative performance, and it, which is you know one of the ways that I think everybody should be looking at the world, uh, I think it's important to pay attention to uh, what's happening on a relative basis uh, and what sectors are performing well and what sectors are not performing well. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, head over to shakenanalytics.com forward slash test drive to take a free 14-day trial. Uh, have a great Tuesday, everyone. I will be back here with you tomorrow morning. Stay well, stay safe, and hope everybody's healthy. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.